Hey guys, soft, fantastic, puffy, carnivore flatbread. Today, we're doing a sausage roll sandwich with a carnivore flatbread on Chris Cook in Nashville. All right, we're gonna start out with a half cup of shredded whole milk mozzarella, five egg yolks, and a half of a block, which is four ounces of cream cheese. Softened, we're also gonna have two tablespoons of chicken flour. This is homemade. If you wanna know how to do it, put chicken flour in the comments down below. I'll show you how I make that. I also have two teaspoons of beef gelatin and a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. That baking soda is optional, but I'm gonna use that to get a little bit of puffiness. You can just leave that out if you don't want it and this is two tablespoons of egg white powder. So what I'm gonna do is put all of my dry ingredients on top of the cheese. So that's the egg white powder, the gelatin, the baking soda, and the chicken flour. And I'm just gonna mix that through the shredded cheese that keeps it from getting lumpy. Then we're gonna go ahead and add our softened cream cheese, and we're going to get that mixed in really well along with the egg yolks. We're gonna start mixing this all on low and then we're gonna bring it up to high because we wanna to try to whip some air into this just to keep it as light as we can. So once that's all liquefied and mixed in there, turn it up on high and whip it and you'll see it starts to turn a little lighter of a color and it looks just a little bit airier and softer as a mixture. I'm gonna melt one tablespoon of butter and I'm going to pour that melted butter into this mixture and go ahead and mix that in really well also. These are the five egg whites I separated as well as one teaspoon of egg white powder. We're just gonna whip these up to stiff peaks. Make sure to scrape down the sides so you don't have any lumps or missed bits there. While those are whipping up, let's preheat our oven to 325 Fahrenheit. And we're gonna cover a cookie sheet with parchment paper. Then we're gonna scrape down the sides one more time, turn the mixer back on for 30 seconds, and we're gonna get these nice stiff peaks. So we just make sure that's all whipped together really well. And then we can go ahead and take this bowl off of the mixer. You can also do this with a hand mixer. Then we're gonna combine our egg whites. So one third goes into our yolk mixture. You can be pretty aggressive with this first third as you mix this in. And then when we mix the other two thirds in, we're gonna be a little more gentle. Okay, so I have this mixed in really well. Now, before I add the next two thirds, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of white vinegar to interact with that baking soda. If you did not use the baking soda, just skip this step, but I'm just gonna mix that vinegar in really well. And then once that is all incorporated and I have this kind of thin mixture, I'm going to come back with my other two thirds of my egg whites and more gently fold those in, try to keep as much of that air as possible. You'll see now we have a light mixture that just starts to flow off of the spatula. So we're gonna pour this onto the parchment paper of our cookie sheet, and we're gonna get this spread out nice and evenly across the entire cookie sheet. Make sure you get all of that out of the bowl. I'm using an angled spatula to do this, but use whatever spatula you have. You just wanna try to get this as evenly spread as you can. You don't have to be overly picky, but you do wanna to try to spread it out evenly so that it bakes evenly and so it can be rolled up evenly like a flatbread. Give it a little shake to make sure there's no air bubbles and it's ready to go in the oven at 325. Now what I'm gonna do is once I close the oven door, I'm gonna turn this up to 425, press start. So it's actually gonna increase temperature as it's baking, which is perfect. And then we're gonna set a timer for 15 minutes. You might wanna run a couple extra minutes depending, but you can always come back and check on it. 
So after 15 minutes, I checked, it was a little light colored. So I did it for an extra two minutes for a total of 17 minutes. You want this nice golden brown top. And you can see it's puffy, it's firm, it's baked, it's perfect. We're gonna let that cool once it's able to come off of the sheet and be handled with our hands without in any way burning ourselves. We can go ahead and pull that off and put that on a cutting board and we're gonna prepare the sausage roll size pieces. This is the sausage I'm gonna use. I'm gonna cut it in the middle. So I need pieces that are about that width. So this sausage is perfect. It's gonna basically make two rolls. So I'm gonna slice this right down the middle, make two flat breads out of this. You can see it's puffy, it's soft, it's flexible. Now this is still a little warm. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this up while it's still warm so that when that gelatin sets a little bit more, this is actually already in a rolled shape. You don't have to do this. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier to work with later on. And Mel's hoping she's gonna get some. Now I'm gonna put these into a Ziploc bag while they're still just a little warm to the touch because they're gonna start to steam just slightly in what's left of the warmth. That's actually gonna soften them. So they're gonna sit there and cool the rest of the way. For my wife, I'm doing a pepper, roasted pepper and onion relish. So I'm just fire roasting some peppers, cutting some onions that I'm gonna cook down for hers, cut the sausage in half, and I'm gonna put this sausage in my air fryer. And I'm going to take this over here and air fry this at 390 for about 10 minutes. You can cook the sausage however you want with something like this. You don't even have to use sausage, but it just does such a great job. So I'm gonna pull these out now. All I need to do is prepare these to be rolled up into the sausage wraps. I'm just gonna cut those little cur curved ends. We're gonna eat those. I'm gonna get some slices of cheddar cheese because this is kind of a Tex-Mex vibe going on. So now all I need to do is unroll my soft flat bread, place my cheese, place the sausage, roll this up, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing for my wife's keto version, except I'm going to unroll it, add the cheese and the sausage, and also add some of that onion and pepper mixture, which I just cooked in a pan with some butter. So I'm just gonna lay the sausage there across the cheese, put the onion and pepper mixture over the top, and then we're just gonna roll this one up. Now, once these are rolled up, and I'm trying to roll them nice and tight so they hold together well. Once these are rolled, you can see these things look beautiful. I'm going to actually put these back in my air fryer basket just for about four minutes at 400 degrees just to warm them up and crisp them slightly. They're gonna be amazing and it is gonna be time to eat. Alright y'all, we are going to try these sausage roll sandwiches on carnivore flatbread. I know the sausage tastes fantastic. Mine is done just in carnivore style. I put a little cheese on it. We've got like a jalapeno ranch to dip in. That's all I've got on ashes. I actually did a mixture of onions and red bell pepper and poblano pepper and the peppers I actually used the flame torch and smoked. You guys saw me me flame roasting those real quick, so. I'm diving in here. Go for it. You gotta, you gotta give it a fair shot. Yeah, totally. Mm, big fan of that. The mm. carnivore flatbread is so soft. It, yeah, it doesn't taste like egg. Super soft, super fluffy. I have a hard time believing that it wasn't just flatbread, honestly, mm -hmm. if you hadn't told me. Super good flavor, super soft. And you can wrap anything in this. We did the sausage because we had a sausage left over that I had gotten on the road when we were at Bucky's. Yep. We were traveling because it was clean ingredients and if I ended up, you know, needing something in a, a hotel room, I wanted to have something in the fridge. Yeah. Open it up and give this a try and do mm -hmm. a, a flatbread sausage roll here and it's uh it's fantastic. I would oh, it's I would amazing. eat this any day. I also think this would be so good too because it actually holds texture very much like flatbread and you know mm -hmm. everything. It's not it's not soggy. It doesn't taste like egg or any of that. I also think you could make like wraps. Like I, I used to love to bring like lunch wraps with like, you know, put yes. jelly meat and cheeses, lunch wrap, deli wrap kind of a thing for yeah. lunch. <clears throat> um, 
you could probably roll this out flat and put toppings on it and do one of those like flatbread pizza kind mm -hmm. of things where you do it like on a pizza stone. And because that's the thing too, it's like soft and everything, but it holds just like yeah. flatbread. So it would totally work. It wouldn't be like runny or mm -hmm. you know anything like that. Like that's perfect. That's a super good flatbread though. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you guys make this, if you live by yourself or you know maybe you're the only one that eats carnivore kind of stuff in the house or keto or whatever, make this. If nobody else wants it, use half of it as like a, maybe like a pizza, like a flatbread pizza that night, mm -hmm. and then use the other half for a sandwich to take to work the next lunch, like a wrap type sandwich. Oh, yeah. um, you, know, you can do whatever you want, but. Just so protein heavy and, you know, filling and. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I mean, these these are big, like you guys don't have to cut them to size. You might get three out of this, depending on how much you want to eat. This is like our only meal today. Mm -hmm. So this is a big meal for us, but. You know, if you want a smaller meal, like you're eating more than once a day, or you know, you just don't eat nearly as much as I do, um, you could totally make these smaller, like cut it in three or cut it in four. You have two cookie sheets, you could double the recipe. Mm. I have a feeling these would probably freeze really well. I have not tried that, but you probably could. Yeah, they, they definitely would yeah. reheat really well, especially if you reheat it in an oven. That would be a great way to just warm it up, soften that gelatin so it becomes foldable again. Definitely, so. definitely doing these again. And yeah, again. yeah. I will be. It is a very easy recipe, truthfully. It's you know you just throw it all in, mix it together, and whip your egg whites, mix those in, and bake it. Yeah, this is really good. This is a winner. I think you guys are gonna love it. And do it round and make it like a pita style thing if you wanted to oh, do. Oh yeah, know, gyros, or, gyros and all that. Yeah. yeah. If you guys are interested in, in maybe seeing how I do like a, a homemade gyro meat, if you want me to make gyros out of these, maybe we can do like a homemade gyro meat recipe, yeah. like a, a carnivore and keto friendly gyro meat that doesn't have fillers. Yeah. Put gyro in the comments down below. I will totally show you guys how we do that. Mm. So also you saw that in this wrap, I made this with a homemade chicken flour. If you like that idea, you can use any meat flour you want, but that chicken flour is real good and it's a whole lot cheaper to make my own than it is to go buy it. But if you guys would like to see how I make homemade chicken flour, put chicken flour down below. And if you wanna see me do gyros and chicken flour both, put one that says gyros and put one that says chicken flour and if you guys are interested in that, I'll show you how we do those. The flavor of this is really being uh, supported, not only the texture, but the flavor is being supported by using that chicken flour. You know, I use pork panko a lot, but the chicken flour, I think, is a much better option. And quite honestly, again, it's cheaper and it's it's just easier to use. Guys, that is the sausage wraps. Appreciate you watching. All of my links are down below. If you want uh, extra recipes like something like a jalapeno ranch or something like that. I do that kind of stuff in the Patreon group and in the YouTube members group all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, for the members of the band, I do that kind of stuff. So um, working on a bunch more of those recipes. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you can totally go support the channel and get that kind of stuff too. And trust me, you definitely want the recipe for the jalapeno ranch. <laughs> I'm just saying, it is you're, you're definitely gonna want this one. It is yeah. awfully good, isn't yeah, it? Oh my gosh, it's amazing, mm. so good. But well, we're going to enjoy Perfect. our dinner. Yes. And hope you guys have a fantastic day. And we'll catch up with you guys for the next video. Bye. All right, y'all. That is the carnivore flatbread with the sausage roll sandwich technique. I hope you guys try this. I hope you enjoy it. You saw, we loved it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Eat your meat, love your life. This is Chris Cook in Nashville. My links are below. And I'm going to see you guys in the kitchen for the next recipe. It's recording. Listen, you always gotta double check. <laughs>